So this is some very, very new developments uh, just in the last couple of weeks. For a long time I've been working on nutrient enriching of carbon or charcoal. Uh, very difficult. So if you take charcoal like bamboo, the rice straw has got nutrients in it, that's why we had an immediate, immediate impact on growth. But if you take something like bamboo charcoal, it's got a high surface area, high carbon content, very little nutrient. So to make it effective on the first, when you first put it in there, to get some plant growth, one way to do it is to actually put nutrients into it, then transport it. So as soon as the plants have taken nutrients, the carbon remains in the soil. So that means you're actually inputting carbon directly into the soil. Most chemical fertilizers actually burn carbon out of the soil. So this is quite significant. So that's the charcoal end of, the end of things. Now I just want to briefly touch on the uses of charcoal in high density plant production. So if you look at landmass utilization, for example, you have to look at when you've got people in cities, for example, how do you get the food to? One of the options is that you, you do high density production. So in the outskirts of the city, you can be doing fish production in this case, and then using the waste water from the fish to, to grow green vegetables, for example. In this particular one, you've got to get the, the ammonia that comes off the fish, you've got to put that through a biological fertilizer or a biological filter. That will convert the ammonia to nitrite and then from nitrite to nitrate. The plants then can uptake the nitrate. So why charcoal is significant in this is if you want to do any sort of like hydroponics or any sort of high density plant production, you have to come up with a soilless medium. You can't be digging soil in the field, put it into pots and then run a water tree, it just sit away. So one of my friends has been doing some research on the use of pure charcoal as a growth, plant growth medium, the soil as plant growth medium. Now, once the, once the bacteria populate the charcoal, what he noted was a significant increase in yield. So not only has he got a, a very stable plant medium, he's also getting more productivity from, from the same fish, the same nutrients, he's getting more productivity. So when you look at the difference between hydroponics and what's called aquaponics, growing fish and plants together, is that hydroponics is sterile, no living, no bacteria, everything is killed. When you start looking at the, the live growth medium with bacteria involvement, you can see the difference there. That's the exact same nutrient profile, you can see the difference in root productivity there, root growth. So, again, while well, this is making charcoal, clean energy and charcoal, you can be utilizing it tends to be utilizing it in something like that high density plant production. So that's a little bit of background on what's happening in the, in the big bad world out there. So as we mentioned before, to try and produce char has to be cost effective. Then to try and utilize char, you have to try and use it the best possible way. So for example, if you had biological charcoal like this, one very effective way is to coat seeds. So by coating the seed, as soon as the roots start to develop, immediately they get inoculated with beneficial bacteria, or what's typically known as PGPB or PGPO, plant growth promoting bacteria or rhizobacteria. So some of the work we've been doing here, as I showed you, also with International, we sent uh, modified charcoal back to the University of Limerick this year. They've been doing with oats, organic oats, Hopefully, we're going to show that even a tiny amount of charcoal, for example, one kilogram, how the impact it can have on old production. So, a lot of, a lot of people looking at charcoal to try and think of just putting it in itself, but you can, I've done trials where I put in even 40 tons per hectare just to show that the, the capacity of the soil to take carbon in, but practically, you probably want to be using it whether you put it in with compost to get uh, nutrients and biologically enriched or going after selected bacteria, then going after seed coating, or um, animal feed. You can actually put different bacteria like probiotics inside the char, mixing with the animal feed as a supplement. That will help with the digestion, also with the tract in the digestive tract. So again, you have to think practicality. One is how to produce it. I should have mentioned, the stove ran for just over half an hour, so just over a third of a kilogram. So I don't know how long people cook for half an hour, 40 minutes, so probably a kilogram and a half or two kilograms a day with a little stove like that, and you'll be making about 20% charcoal. 
So although the charcoal may not seem like a lot, it's a hell of a lot when there's bacteria in it and it's colder than it seems. Yes. No, what this stove does is it takes any woody material, mm -hmm. makes the woody material into gas and leaves behind the charcoal. So you can take anything from, you, you know, if you've got um, any biomass around you. So you don't have to go and buy it's not a gas, so it produces gas from wood, called wood gas. So with, with a stove like this, you can take your own residue, make clean energy, as you see there, no smoke, and then have the carbon as a byproduct. So before people would take wood, big problem, like the likes in Nigeria, huge problem with deforestation. People go in, cut the forest, turn it into charcoal, transport the charcoal for domestic cooking. But right here, we're seeing we're using a fraction of the wood to make the, to make combustible gas immediately and leave charcoal as a byproduct. So if you want to see practical ways of how to change people, you've got to give them something that they can use, right? No point in this hypothetical, you should almost stop burning their forest and making charcoal. Nonsense. Unless you give them a practical way, an alternative, right? So the, what I presented was that a stove like this, with just a little bit of a change on how you burn the wood, gives you an opportunity to take away the carbon as a byproduct. And then, for example, if you put it into seedling production, as I showed you earlier, you can have a major impact on, on seedling production. So for reforestation, by getting the char in the, in the early root development of the plant. Just like we're saying here with the seed coating or some of the organic fertilizers we have that has some charcoal in it, you can get, or like the, the actually is a chemical one, every year you can put a little bit in. You can, if you have loads of charcoal and you want to put it in all at one go, great, but it's very expensive. For example, if you want to put in a ton of bamboo charcoal, you can buy probably four tons of chicken waste for the same cost as one ton of bamboo charcoal. The bamboo charcoal's got no nutrients in it. So there's no farmer in China going to turn around and buy a ton of charcoal to put in the soil. But if he sold fertilizer that's carbon based, every year he puts his fertilizer in, he's directly putting carbon in there. Wood charcoal, especially hardwood, will have higher carbon content, higher surface area, so it's very little nutrient. If you put it into the soil, you most likely will not see any plant productivity. If you put nutrients into it, or if you put bacteria into it, you will see immediate impact. So, it, and, and because it's got higher carbon content, it's actually doing more carbon sequestration, more carbon storage. So again, once you once you know, this is the feedstock. So if it comes from wood material, not a lot of nutrients. So you could put some nutrients in there, or mix it into animal feed, then very beneficial. If it comes from agriculture residue or animal waste, it's already got a lot of nutrients in it, so when you put it into the soil, you should see an immediate effect. Agriculture residue, forest, forest waste, animal waste, if you just group them in together, very quickly you'll find what works best for what charcoal. Slash and burn means you burn everything to ash. When ash falls in the soil and it rains, where does the ash go? Gone. Never to be seen again. You carbonize it. Very stable. It stays as you see in the soil profile in, in tropical conditions. It remains in the soil. Very stable. So the complete opposite of slash and burn is slash and char. So you can see from uh, Dr. Steiner's field trial, once you put the charcoal back in there, it immediately you got a plant response. So different again. We definitely are not encouraging people to go out and chop down forest to make charcoal. We're saying that if you use it in a practical way, there's loads of available feedstocks. Loads of ways that you can convert it to clean energy and charcoal. You just got to be practical about how you do it, how you use it. I didn't bring this one to the market yet because I want to get this cheap so it's standalone, it doesn't need any electricity. But come back to me in one month. <laughs> Anyone else? So please go enjoy your Saturday afternoon. Thank you very much for your time.